All right, we're picking it up here where up till now we have gone through and we have defined, opened up our project, checked our environment, checked our profiles. We have gone and made sure we were on the right coordinate system. We have made a tent. We've made a cadastral map kind of laid in their section lines. We've only got the section lines. You might have the quarter lines and the quarter quarter lines. We might have a subdivision plat in there. We've done that. We have made a tin, a simple one by just offsetting 100 feet all the way around and putting some lines at elevation and then sticking another short little line here when we made a tin from just drawing entities, if you would. All right. We then finally have gone using correct layers, we're hoping. We have gone and made an alignment, which became, was a P line made by making lines at zero elevation and using a fillet and made an alignment or made what will become an alignment. We're going to uh, go ahead now and actually define the alignment by going to alignment tools and creating alignment from objects. Now, again, there are all kinds of different ways, and we'll be coming back to create different types of alignments uh, as you finish up and with your horizontal uh, curve stuff in highway survey but for thinking out learning how to draft using lines and fillets in the flat in the plan view is an important skill that transfers I'm gonna grab the polyline together it's gonna go ahead it's gonna tell me to accept the direction it's a direction I knew because I drafted it that way that's why I turned it around 180 degrees I'm going to hit a return or a space bar to accept. And in this case, this is where you want to be a little bit proactive now about your naming. I'll call this September 25 underscore center line. All right. Starting station. I'm going to be in my starting station at 1,000. I'm going to go, more or less, I don't have a lot of different things, but I'm going to go 100 foot ticks at the major. 25 at the minor every quarter station. I'm not changing the design criteria now, but we'll do some of that later. I'm going to go ahead and it just made, if I zoom in here, it made the alignment showing the PCs and uh, the station along that alignment. I'm zooming in and out. Now, if you need to look at things, right, numbers and the like, you see, you can go ahead. One of the great things is to go ahead and change this back and forth. Okay, you've now made a horizontal alignment. The next thing to do, you have a surface, you have a horizontal alignment, to go ahead and make a profile. And this is to be the first time that we go ahead and actually look a little bit more at what the profile data is so you actually stick your profile in the right spot. Before we start jumping around, we've learned to use layer states we also now want to use, and if you look at them, they're all right here, all your layer states. We also want to learn to use V's for views, V for view. We're going to make a new view, turn the clicky clicks off, and call it overall. We want to do this before we start jumping around the drawing. I'm going to grab from kind of the outside to the outside here. Hit an enter, hit OK, apply, OK. This is going to be able to jump us back to this point. We're going to keep our plan information in the um, correct coordinate system. We're also going to keep our profiles in the correct coordinate systems and our major assembly in the correct coordinate system. And that coordinate system, we hope, will go into your brain deep enough that you can advocate for it when you go to other programs other kind of drafting programs. You notice here the screen is coming up showing me where I am in relationship to the alignment also what my elevation is in relationship to the surface so we had surface alignment the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create a surface profile we're going to look down below every single point on this alignment and come up with its elevation we do that by going profile create surface profile the alignment is there the topo is there. We can go through, and we're not adding offsets at the moment. We're going to add, all right? We're going to say, I guess, draw in profile view. We're not going to do that. We're just going to hit OK at this point in time, and we're going to finish out and realize we've made a profile. We do that so we can be a little bit more proactive right to go over here to profile view and we're going to create a profile view here 
now we can start thinking well this is the alignment and we can basically give it a PV I guess it likes that dash September 25th that underscore center line again names mean something important we can go ahead and put our base information there and it's going to take us through now a set of options here on the left so we've kind of set our basic ideas here station range sure we're going to go automatic that works for me 10,000 to 60 plus 65 you might be proactive and go to 10,000 to 60 200 perhaps You don't have to, and we're using tabs in between. Profile view height. Okay, we don't want to use automatic. We want to use something specific, and you'll see why. We're beginning at 10,000. User specified. We want to go, maybe we'll go here 990. And we'll learn 990 tab. And we might want to go up not to 1170. We might want to go up to a certain height, depending what we have, maybe 1150. You'll see now we know our datum for this is going to be at 990 and for an elevation and a station of 1000. Profile display options, we won't play with that. Data bands, we'll just leave that where it's at. Profile hatch options, we'll say OK. And now here's the conundrum. Create your profile view. Where are you going to put it? Well, you put it at a known place, 1000, 990 with an extra zero. And then we're going to check that it comes in correct. Hit a return. It made it way over at a place on the coordinate system here of 1000, 990, with it being station elevation times 10, elevation of the base datum. I can now zoom, center, and I know my center point is 1000, 990, with an extra zero. Hit a return, maybe give it a height of 100. And right around there, you'll have your, boy, that looks a lot nicer without all those lines, doesn't it? What you want to check, however, is you want to check, using your AutoCAD command, ID, the intersection of that. You want to make sure that it's absolutely correct, and it is. It's actually not. It's at 1,200 is where it began. So we did something wrong in terms of offsetting. But we really want that to be over what? You want to be it to be over 200 feet so we can move. I'm sorry, we can grab this profile object. We can left click spacebar, spacebar to move, say, at 200 angle 180. And now as we look at each of these ID from the endpoint of that, it's giving me exactly what I want. And we check it one more spot. ID, the endpoint of that, and you see it's actually at 1,108.09, and everything looks hunky dory. Again, where we don't, we want to be specific about being on a coordinate system that's not only good for the program, but it's good for us. Now you've got this out here. The next thing to do before you start drafting is to make a view, V for view new view this is going to be called profile clicky clicks off define a window these are habits that should come to some of you easier than others but there's habits that need to come to all apply okay the reason why those habits have to come is so you can now look someplace up here we don't see it but if we go to v for view we can go to overall set current okay we can go V to view, go to overall, set current, OK. And you're now at the V to view, overall, profile, set current. You're now at a point where you can, in fact, control what you want to be doing. You now have known information for what's there. We see our funky kind of center line profile. It's giving me information here where I am on the cursor. But I also have the ability in AutoCAD to look here to the bottom left to see the coordinates knowing they are station elevation times 10. All right, we're running out of time here. This is going to run about an hour when we all get done. We'll let students cut it down and comment. Thanks for listening. The last couple steps will come in the next 20 minutes. See you later. Bye.